I went out to shoot some landscapes the other day and I had a once in a lifetime wildlife experience. Wait till you see this, it was absolutely insane. Have you ever passed by an area and out of the corner of your eye, you see an absolutely incredible scene that you just have to photograph, but for whatever reason, you don't have the time and you just have to pass it on by. And then that location and that scene haunts you for the rest of the day. When you go to sleep at night, it's all you can think about. And when you wake up first thing the next morning, that's all you really wanna do. Well, that's exactly what's happened to me with two locations. And I'm gonna go check them out now. I never need an excuse to photograph a sunrise. It is the perfect way to start the day, but I prefer to capture a little more than just that brilliant orange ball in the sky. Just a few days ago, I drove right past this awesome river and caught a glimpse of amazing golden light reflected in the dark, turbulent surface. This location was simply amazing. It had everything I was looking for, the river, lush green trees, bushes, and the sun was rising right above it, but I didn't have time to stop. So I made a mental note and returned the first thing the following morning, and I couldn't believe just how good things looked. I set up my gear and captured this sunrise on the river. I managed to capture the scene just like I remembered seeing it. That amazing early morning light not only covered the horizon in layers of gold, but it also lightly painted the surface of the flowing water and lit the trees growing all along the shoreline. I love how the river snakes its way through the trees towards the sun, making you want to look further and further through the image. I'm so glad I returned to this location and captured this awesome sunrise. This one will end up as a canvas on my wall. All right, off to the next location. It's 2018 and Colorado is experiencing a massive drought. Water levels are at an all-time low and while this is a huge problem, it has also created some very interesting photo opportunities. A short hike down to the bottom reveals a very interesting scene. Look at these amazing lines, layers, and contrasting shadows and highlights. This is the scene that has been haunting me. I set up and composed my shot. I captured this shot using my Nikon 20mm lens. I wanted to get as much of the scene in the shot as possible. But let's try something a little different. I like that shot, the wide angle shot. You can really see the lines really good. But I'm going to use my 2-500 to 500 and see if I can like compress the entire scene so I can get all of these lines and these, these ridges and everything all smashed into one shot. Using a zoom really does make things look so much different. When I set up this shot, I didn't even notice that tiny little boat in the far right corner. Let's zoom in a little and see if we can get a better shot featuring that boat, because that little boat helps tell more of a story in this scene. There we go. I like this shot much better. All those strong lines on the shore caused by the recent drought really help guide your eye all the way back to that little boat. I'm really glad I came back to this spot. On the way out, I spot a beautiful red-tailed hawk, and of course, I can't help but grab a few shots of this incredible bird of prey as it flies around a graveyard of old dead trees. Those old trees give this bird the perfect vantage point on the world below, and it isn't long before the hawk takes to the air, only to disappear on the other side of a ridge. I decide to hit the road, but I don't get very far because another very interesting scene catches my eye, and as soon as I step out of my truck, I'm greeted by a rather interesting insect. This is a hummingbird moth and these little thistles right here. Oh, and they're so cool. They look just like a hummingbird, but it's a moth. It's pretty easy to see why this incredible insect is often called a hummingbird moth. It behaves very much like a hummingbird. Let's capture a few images. Wow, look at this moth. It's incredible, and it was just hovering around just like a hummingbird. I'm not sure what the exact species is, and I know there's a few bug experts watching who should know. Let me know in the comments below. And look at those amazing wings. What a beautiful pattern. And in this last shot, you can really see the moth tasting that little purple thistle. What an awesome insect. This location looks really interesting too, so I'm gonna go explore and see what's down here. Now this is awesome. Look at all these stumps and trees. This will make a really cool foreground interest with all those lines. Oh, this is cool. I really like how this shot turned out. There's so much going on here with the lines, the stumps, the water, the mountain in the background. It's very interesting. I used the focus shift feature of the D850 on this image and it works very well. I made a video showcasing this feature a few weeks ago if you're interested. This shot is interesting, but with all that dried out sand and those old weathered stumps, they really lack the spark of life. So I wonder if black and white would look better. Oh wow, that's very interesting as well. It almost looks like another planet. 
All right, let's get a little closer to the stumps in the background. This is what I really like about my tripod. It has no center column, so I can put the legs out like this and get this really low perspective. I just use this boulder to help prop up this leg to keep it level. And now I've got my shot. I've got like this tree stump here, a tree stump there, a tree stump there, and then further in the background and all of these lines. And then just for story, there's some bones in the shot too. That's pretty cool. And here's the shot. I would love to be able to take a time machine back to this location when these trees were alive. I wonder how long ago that was. Even though there's a drought, these trees were on dry land at one point. I imagine the water rising is what killed them. It's definitely a dry, desolate area now, and those bones really help tell that story. You ever heard of a spinal tap? Well, look at this little part of a vertebrae. Boop! Spinal tap! Look at these incredible thistle flowers. Like these are shedding their seeds already. But some of these, look at this. Oh man, they're incredible. Oh, they smell wonderful. Oh, look at that. That's crazy. I gotta set up and get some pictures of these. These are so cool looking. This is one incredibly beautiful flower. Not only do they look absolutely amazing, but they smell like freshly baked sugar cookies. I mean, these things are just incredible. One of the really interesting things about them is the varying stages of life. This one is ready to produce some seeds, while this one hasn't even opened yet. And talk about cool, look at the fractal-like pattern this flower has. Let's take a closer look at one in full bloom. Whoa, what a vibrant flower. I couldn't resist touching them, and as soon as I reached out to touch one, this happened. A female hummingbird flew in and landed right in the palm of my hand. I can't even describe to you the overwhelming amount of joy I was feeling at this very moment. So what do you do when a hummingbird magically lands in your hand? Well, you capture the moment because without some type of proof, no one's ever going to believe you. I instinctively thought to myself, I can't get this shot because I don't have my long lens handy. And if I move, she'll fly away. But then I realized I had my camera in my right hand and I could very easily capture this moment with my 50 millimeter lens. So I shot this video with my right hand, trying to remain as still and calm as humanly possible. I think you can imagine exactly how I felt. As I started filming, I took notice of how the bird felt in my hand. It weighed absolutely nothing. If I didn't see the bird in my hand, I wouldn't know it was there, but I could feel it. And it was the softest thing I have ever felt. She finally decided to leave my hand, but she didn't go very far, so I continued to capture this amazing little jewel of a bird. Of course, I had to capture a few images while she was here. I think this is a female rufous hummingbird, and I bet she was just stopping while migrating back to South America. Maybe she was just a little bit tired, and my hand looked like the perfect perch. Since she's being so cooperative, let's get a close-up of that beautiful face. Wow, I think this might be as close as you can get. Look at those incredible feathers on her head. The color, they look metallic. That awesome looking beak. And check out those tiny round feathers right under her eye. I never even knew those were there. What an amazing bird. This little girl is definitely going to end up starring in my upcoming video on hummingbirds of Colorado. What an absolutely amazing experience this was. I'd like to say an extra special thank you to Neil and Pat for this shirt. It's awesome and I absolutely love it. What did you think of the video? Those landscapes were really interesting, but of course the highlight was that hummingbird landing in the palm of my hand. That was absolutely mind blowing and I can scratch that off of my bucket list. If you thought this video was fun or cool, share it. That's really helpful to me. And don't forget to click that thumbs up button and leave comments. I always love hearing what everybody thinks about the video. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on my latest videos and check out my website for my photography workshop schedule and the books I've written. Until next time, I'll see you later.